My name is Larry Gertz, G-E-R-T-S-C-H. Frequently at where I work, my colleagues ask me, what do you invest in? And I say dirt. And my family's been in the oil fields for a long time. I inherited less than 10 acres. I've since acquired more than 200 acres, so I'm one of the larger landowners there. It's interesting because Mike made a point about what we paid. I just recently bought a piece of property. Trust me, I paid a lot more than agricultural rights because it was right in the center of my whole operations. It, 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 it intrigues me that so many people move to the valley and say, gee, we need to keep this pristine area open. We need to keep this gym open. But you know, we build about somewhere between three quarters of a mile of a mile of fence every year, me and my boys. And no one shows up to help dig the posts. I have the water every day in the whole summer. No one shows up to help irrigate it, but everybody wants it green. And I'm in favor of that. Make no mistake. We talk about zoning. The general idea of zoning is that we don't put a landfill next to a host of homes. It doesn't say that you know, the 20 acres is a number pulled out of the air. If you look at the 20 acre zoning, Midway Lane is a delineation point south of Midway Lane is 10 acres only. So why is north of Midway Lane 20 acres only? Probably two or three years ago, I didn't support 10 acres only. And I was approached and asked to support it. And as I did, I, I had to think a lot about it. And last summer I was approached by a landowner and he asked me if I would support it. And I said that I would. And so I am, I don't want anybody to be confused, but I am in favor of, of 10 acres only. I don't know, conservation easements, I'm in favor of those. And I'd be interested in that for some of my property. Um, it's worked for the Flinders and the Snyderville Basin up uh, west of Kimball Junction, east of Kimball Junction. I worked for the O'Briens in Wanship. I'm not aware that the TDR program has worked, but I think some form of that, whether it's conservation rights, could work. If you don't think we have urban sprawl in the North Fields, you need to come out there once in a while. We have a barn down there that there's 40, that houses 40 horses. And most of those people live in Park City. And they come down 40, they turn at the other end, and they think 12 North is the same speed limit as 40. And they come across there every day. We moved our cattle the other night. There wasn't a car in sight. By the time we had to move them a block, we had six cars honking and trying to get through the herd of cows. And so we had people all over. So just to summarize, there's no for sale signs on my property. I'm a rancher. I enjoy raising cattle. I would consider conservation easements. I'm interested in passing on the heritage to my children and grandchildren. And I would urge the council to vote to rezone for the issues that are the reasons I can Thank you. I have some others? Yes, please. <coughs> Tracy Taylor, Heber City. Um, it's great to see the community come together on an issue and be able to discuss it and to work together. I don't care if you've been here for 200 years or two years, we're all in this together. And I think if anything, we've seen some of the great people that are in our community that are willing to come together to solve this very urgent problem we've got. Um, you know, people talk about their land and what it's worth, and um, as a real estate broker, I can say that um, quality of life is, is what we sell more than dirt in this community. And so our quality of life in our community affects every single person's property in this whole valley. If our air has an inversion like Salt Lake, your property values are going to go down. Not as many people are going to want to live here. Having said that, um, what came to my mind as I'm listening to these landowners who have worked the land, 
Um, I'd love to come out and help you move sprinkler and build fence. I've actually done it myself. Um, I'm married into a ranching family in Moab, fifth generation. So for what it's worth, I'd love to come and help you. I'm out there a lot. If you see me, stop me. And my dog would love to move your cattle. Um, having said that, um, it occurred to me that everybody keeps bringing up how much wetlands is out there. If that's the case, this 10-acre zoning is not going to solve a lot of people's problems out there. It's not. They cannot build, right? So if you're really concerned about every landowner out in the north fields, and not just the select few that can actually build out there, because as we know, if they can build out there, then their property's worth more, right? The transferable development rights should solve a lot more people's problems out there. If they, if the zoning was going to be one per five and they all got to use their acreage as transferable developmental rights, then every one of them will get those rights. Not just the very few people that can actually build on the property with your solution of a 10 acre zoning. So I would just like you to think about this, because if you're really truly concerned about all landowners out in the North Fields, this 10-acre zoning is only going to solve very few people's problems. And we do want there to be some uh, financial gain for these families out there. We're not asking for us to keep it pristine without due compensation but the transferable development rights will be able to be used by all landowners not out there and not just look at it short-sightedly as who can build. Thank you. I see a hand I thought from the young lady in the back. Yes, please. Hi, my name is Angela Luker, L-U-E-K-E-R, and I am a recent resident of Heber. Um, I didn't plan on saying anything today because I'm just not that type of person to really get out there and say anything. But from listening to both sides of the story, and I came here because I wanted to hear both sides of the story. I grew up in South Carolina in a really small town came to Utah, moved, lived in Salt Lake, it was a complete culture shock. Then I moved to LA County, California. Talk about culture shock. And I looked at my husband and I said, there's absolutely no way that I'm going back to Salt Lake City. I just can't do it. I have to go back to a small town. Granted, we, our, our options were really small, and so uh, it was either going back to the 